Hey lovelies, I'm Larissa J, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing how to be a woman after God's own heart. This is going to be the beginning of a series on biblical femininity right here on my channel. So make sure that you come back every Saturday morning to continue this series with me. I'm really excited to dive into this topic with you all because it's so relevant right now. This is also going to be a little bit of a book review on a book that I'm currently reading called Even Exile and the Restoration of Femininity. It's written by Rebecca Merkel. I'm going to leave a link in the description box if you would like to follow along and read this book with me. Biblical womanhood, marriage, and the nuclear family are all under attack because these are all things that God has designed, ordained, and deemed as very good. And as a result, we as women are being called upon to be set apart and stand firm in obedience to God's instruction to us. If we want to excel as women, we must embrace God's design for womanhood despite what the world says. So as we embark upon this journey of growing as women after God's heart, as feminine women, I want to encourage you not to give up. We are in a battle, ladies, a spiritual battle. You know, Ephesians 6.12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But we must also remember that we are victorious through Christ Jesus. Okay, so six characteristics of a woman after God's own heart. The first one is that she loves God and she invests in a relationship with him. You know, this is very foundational and key as we pursue excellence and strive to become better women. We must understand that apart from the Lord, we can do absolutely nothing as John 15, 5 says. A woman after God's own heart is a woman who truly loves God. This woman invests in her relationship with God by scheduling time to meet with him throughout her day. Now, I personally like to do this first thing in the morning. There's just something about giving God the first part of my day. I truly believe that the rest of my day is blessed as a result. In addition to spending quiet time with the Lord, a woman after God's heart prays and talks to him throughout the day. She acknowledges him in her decision making. She shares his love with others. And the scriptural reference for this is Matthew 22, 37. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The way that we live, the way that we carry ourselves, and even our speech should exemplify our love for God. Now, this is a work in progress, so don't feel bad or condemned. If this is an area that needs work, ask God to help you grow and develop in this area, and he will help you. The second characteristic of a woman after God's heart is that she obeys God and she complies with his will. A woman after God's own heart is a woman who obeys God. She longs to please him and she doesn't want to break his heart. This woman does what God instructs in his word, regardless of her opinions and feelings about it. I'd venture to say that this is an area that most modern women, men too, but we're talking about women here, they struggle with. Society says, well, I don't agree with that, or you're a bigot, or you're, you have some sort of phobia. There's all these labels and excuses and no accountability. But no, God's word is his word. He meant what he said. He said what he meant, regardless of what our limited minds have to think about it. A woman after his heart accepts it and she complies. If God says in his word that he doesn't want her having sex outside of marriage, she complies. If he says not to lie or use foul language or to be gentle instead of brash, she accepts it. If he instructs her on how to dress and how to carry herself, she doesn't make excuses to continue in the behavior that she prefers. This is something that I notice among women. These women now want to dress provocatively, behave seductively. Those are the ways of the world, sis. At some point in our Christian walk, we must set aside those ways and pursue excellence and modesty. And it's not an overnight thing, but we must be willing to comply as the Holy Spirit begins to deal with our hearts regarding change. My modesty journey has been progressive over the years. And even now, even though I dress modestly, I've found that there is an impression on my heart to make more adjustments in pursuit of increasing femininity. We just need to be led of the Lord and follow our convictions. The scriptural reference for this point is Romans 12, 1 through 2. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. All right. The third thing is that she respects and reverences God and authority. First and foremost, 
we want to respect and reverence God, right? This includes not saying his name in vain. Instead, use OMG or oh my gosh. This also includes being an ambassador for Jesus. When people look at you, can they see Jesus? Do your actions represent God well or do they embarrass him? Consider this in your decision making. Now, when it comes to respecting authority, we can do this by doing it as unto the Lord. Colossians 3.23 says, work willingly at whatever you do, as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Now, I spoke on this topic when I taught how wives can respect their husbands, even when it seems like it's undeserved. And I will leave a link to that video in the description box. It's great information whether you're married or single and want to be married. But we can also respect authority as unto the Lord in other contexts as well. Yes, we need to respect our husbands, but this also includes our employers and anyone who has an authoritative position in our lives. One thing that I find quite sad is that respect for law enforcement and senior citizens seem to have flown out the window. Respect doesn't mean you have to agree with everything that they say and do. It doesn't mean doing what they say without regard to morals or biblical principles. There should be a level of respect in the way that you deal with authority. It simply means you regard their feelings positions or rights. Treat them with respect just like you want to be treated with respect. And the scriptural reference for this point is Romans 13, 1 through 2. Everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God and those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. The fourth characteristic is that the word is in her heart. She knows the word, but not only does she know it, she also lives by it. This means that we must study the word. We can memorize scriptures so that we can recite it and pull it out of our heart in the greatest time of need. Not only this, but as a woman after God's own heart, we must be able to encourage and edify others with the word. So if a friend is discouraged, she's able to remind her of what the word says. She is able to build her husband up with her words, which come from the word of God that is in her heart. She's able to train her children in the way that they should go because she knows the word. Our goal should be to become so full of the word that it permeates throughout our lives and it comes out in our conversations because it's just a part of us. Again, it's okay if we haven't arrived at this place yet, but let this be your goal. Let us strive to be this woman. The scriptural reference for this point is thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's Psalms 119, 11. The fifth characteristic of a woman after God's own heart is that she has a love for people and she has a servant's heart. People often reference Proverbs 31, the Proverbs 31 woman. And this woman, she loved people and she served them. Proverbs 31, 20 says she extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. This woman served her husband. She served her children. She helped the poor and those in need. And I'm going to go off on a small tangent here because the biblical hierarchy is that we as women put God first, then our husbands, then our children, and then everything else. Whether it's serving in a church or working on a job or volunteering. And this often ends up out of order. When we do things out of order, it gets messy. So a woman after God's own heart loves people and she serves them. If you're married, this means your family is first before your job and your work responsibilities. And if you're single, you can focus on serving others and those in need. We should also be willing to teach women who are younger than us to disciple women who may be a little more immature in the faith than we are. Sadly, this isn't happening as frequently as it should be. But Christian women should be teaching women how to be wise and pure, how to submit to their husbands, how to raise their children and to care for their homes. The scriptural reference for this point is Titus 2, 3 through 5. Similarly, teach the older women to live in a way that honors God. They must not slander others or be heavy drinkers. Instead, they should teach others what is good. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children, to live wisely and be pure, to work in their homes, to do good, and to be submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring shame on the word of God. All right, the sixth characteristic is that she is feminine. She embodies the qualities and has the appearance of a God-made woman. She's gentle and kind. She's wise and has a beautiful heart and great character. She carries herself with respect and dignity and dresses in a way that is modest yet classy and attractive. She speaks honorably and watches her words. Think about the most feminine woman that you can imagine. What makes her feminine to you? How does she act? How does she speak? How does she dress? How does she carry herself? When I think of a feminine woman, I think of a woman whose presence commands respect. Both men and women respect her because of the way she carries herself. 
It goes beyond clothes and jewelry and makeup and hair. These things can contribute to the overall femininity, but it exudes from your being. It's in the way you speak and the way you interact with people. Proverbs 31, 26 says, when she speaks, her words are wise and she gives instructions with kindness. And the scriptural reference for this point is 1 Peter 3, 3 through 4. Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourself instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. All right, ladies, I want you to comment below. Which of these qualities have you mastered and which do you want to improve upon? Please, please share this video with your lady friends so that we can all grow in the faith together. This is a sisterhood and the world needs to see more godly women like us. Stay tuned for next week's video as we dive deeper into the topic of biblical femininity. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.